I wasn't really sure what to expect at the trade deadline from the Winnipeg Jets. I wanted them, you know, to address some holes that they had, you know, maybe even in the top six on defense for sure, but I wasn't sure if they'd go out and do that. I wasn't sure if they had the hunger after trading for Sean Monaghan with that first round pick. It really didn't seem like Winnipeg was planning to do anything big, but Kevin Chivaldeyev woke up Friday morning on deadline day and he said, I gotta take care of business. He went over to New Jersey and he said, look, what is it going to take to get Tyler Toffoli? The Jets trade a second next season and a third this season for Tyler Toffoli adds a guy with 26 goals already on the season. That was a huge pickup that I really wasn't sure if it was going to happen and I'm over the moon for it. Chevy said I'm going all in and then he followed it up at the end of the day bringing in a depth defenseman probably to a play on the third pair I'd have to imagine maybe the second pair with Colin Miller just a very stable calm defenseman can add some offense but just you know just a really solid defenseman and you know at the worst it, it it just makes sure that Logan Stanley doesn't have to play unless there's an absolute disaster injury wise on defense right absolute worst case because he's not worse than Stanley I think he's better than Schmidt and you know call me insane here but I think he's could be better than Pionk uh, you know in the structure that Winnipeg runs here this was an incredible job by Kevin Chivaldeoff this was exactly what he needed to do he nailed it right on the nose just like he's been doing for the last you know calendar year I'll talk about that in a little while but right now what this showed to me was the Winnipeg Jets are truly all in on winning a Stanley Cup. They said, you know what, we don't need these picks. We're going to go out, we're going to go try to win a Stanley Cup and put our best foot forward here. And they absolutely did that, taking a home run swing and getting Tyler Toffoli for way less than I had ever imagined he'd go for. That was crazy. I thought he'd be, you know, at least a first round pick considering the guy has 26 goals. I know he's a winger and he's a rental, however, Come on, man. Like, that's a high-end rental there. I can't believe the Jets didn't need to give up a first. Now, adding to Foley into that top six really changes things for Winnipeg. I mean, these are just projected lines, but these are lines that definitely could be a thing going forward here with a healthy lineup. Valerdi will be returning soon to Foley, and uh, Miller are going to be making their debuts on Monday against the Washington Capitals. Here's a potential lineup. Connor Shifley, Valerdi, Ehlers, Monaghan, to Foley, Niederreiter, Lowry, Appleton, and then Aya Fala. Nemestikov and either Perfetti or Baron. That is an insane forward group. Look at the depth. That could legitimately be a second line. Pretty much was Winnipeg's second line for a little bit at the beginning of the season, and it did very well. I really like the forward depth on this team. Head over to defense. Morrissey, DeMello, they've been solid all season. Dylan and Pionk, you know, Pionk's a little bit, you know, out there. We'll see uh, kind of what Bones wants to end up doing there. I wouldn't mind switching Miller and Pionk in this situation, but Sandberg, he's been really comfortable as of late. He's been looking really good. Big improvements this year. Then, you know, Miller or Schmidt can come in, uh, you know, as a 7th D. I think that Schmidt will probably be the 7th D, and then Stanley will be the 8th defenseman as well there. Very fun lineup for Winnipeg. And of course, you got, you know, a Hart Trophy nominee in Connor Ellibuck. They can't hurt either, right? So I love this lineup, and I think that, you know, they have a legit shot at winning a Stanley Cup this year. The Toffoli addition was a big message to the room saying that, hey, you know what? We believe in this team. We need a big piece here, and we're going to give it to you guys. We're going to give you guys the best shot at winning a Stanley Cup that we can. We're going to fill the room with as much talent as we can. And Chevy went out and made those two moves, and that was great. But the message it sent to the fan base was arguably bigger because, you know, for the last little while, Jets have been a middling team, kind of, you know, just felt like getting to the playoffs was good enough. And, uh, you know, this year they said, no, you know what, we're going to be a playoff team, but not only that, we're going to be contenders. And I really love what Chevaldeoff did in this past calendar year. If we look at, you know, going back to last trade deadline-ish, the Winnipeg Jets traded a second round pick for Nino Niederreiter. Massive steal. He's one of the best, you know, fits that this team's had in a long time. Great addition, great player. Vlad Nemestikov at the deadline last year acquired for a 2025 fourth round pick. That has been more than worth it. That's an absolute steal for Winnipeg. Only a fourth round pick for a guy that can fit anywhere in the lineup. Kind of Matthew Perot-esque. He's awesome. Then of course in the offseason we had the big Pierre-Luc Dubois trade which sent him to LA and he's had a very horrific year there. The Jets bring in Gabriel Velarde who's arguably been their best player this season. Alex Iafalo who's been you know fine in the middle six. Probably going to be a fourth liner going forward. 
forward here now with the addition of Toffoli, Rasmus Kapari, who's just been a fine depth player, and the 2024 second round pick that belongs to Montreal will probably be a high second round pick this season. And uh, at the draft, I think the Jets will be making their first selection around, you know, the 36 pick mark, kind of where I think that uh, Montreal is going to end up there, probably closer to the bottom of the league. Then you've got the Gawanka and Izev trade, pretty much, you know, a nothing trade, just AHL stuff. But the Jets then send a first round pick and a third round pick just over a month ago for Sean Monaghan. He has been a great pickup for Winnipeg. He's been fitting in very well, scoring goals on the power play, winning faceoffs. Sean Monaghan has been very good. And then on deadline day, the Winnipeg Jets acquired Tyler Toffoli for just a second and a third, and then Colin Miller later on in the day for a fourth round pick. Chevy, in the last calendar year, has added so much to this team for really so little. He has gone out and done so much, treated really no prospects to do it either. He had a day on deadline day, and he has had a year. Uh, it's just been super impressive to watch. And here's just a look at, you know, what they've added and what's gone out just in the big picture here. Niederreiter, Nemestikov, Velarde, Ayafalo, Kapari, a second round pick, which is going to be pretty high for Montreal, Sean Monaghan, Tyler Toffoli, and Colin Miller. Out, Winnipeg's traded their first, second, and third in 2024, their second round pick in 2025, fourth round pick in 2026, a 2027 20, third if the Jets win a cup. Uh, if they don't, that third round pick will just, you know, stay as Winnipeg's third round pick. They lose Dubois, who's had an awful year in LA, as I mentioned before. They buy out Blake Wheeler, which was long overdue, and Declan Chisholm gets lost on waivers. Who cares? This is absolutely incredible work by Kevin Cheveldayoff. I've given his flowers before, but he deserves so much more now. Uh, he finishes off his calendar year with a big piece in Tyler Toffoli, a chef's kiss, and this is the best lineup that Winnipeg has had in maybe, you know, five to six years now. It's currently a dogfight for first in the Central. Currently, the Dallas Stars lead it with 89 points. They did not add a lot on deadline day. Uh, you know, obviously added Chris Tanev and they have Logan Stankoven. They're a very good team, but I think Winnipeg can win this division. They have three three games in hand on Dallas, and they're only four points back, tied with Colorado, but I, I mean, they have two games in hand on Colorado as well. I think Winnipeg can make a run at winning the division, and if there was ever a year two, I think that this is the year. I think they're prepared to do it, and uh, man, winning a Central division banner on top of you know the team that they have already playing a team maybe like Nashville or LA in the first round that would be very ideal let the stars and let Colorado beat each other up in the first round and uh, you know if you win the first round which I think the Jets will against a Nashville or an LA then you go on to play either the stars or the avalanche and I think Winnipeg's got a pretty strong case in uh, you know beating either of those teams I feel pretty confident in this team We'll have to see what happens going forward here, but I think Winnipeg has one of the stronger, more complete teams in the NHL. But I'm hyped, everybody. What do you guys think about the Winnipeg Jets, their deadline day, their team as a whole? I want to hear from you guys. Leave a comment down below. Well, you know, how, how do you feel about the Winnipeg Jets? How are we feeling, Jets fans? I want to know. Let me know down below. Uh, but that's all I've got. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Um, this is so much fun, guys. I can't wait to see Toffoli and Miller make their debuts. I'm going to hop on out of here. Thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next one. Go Jets, go. Bye-bye.